Before you skip to the middle of the video, please stick with me for a moment. This video is somewhat controversial and people might jump to the wrong conclusions. If anyone has a different opinion than me, you can express it below in the comments. With my relatively small follower base, it is clear that I wouldn't make this video to insult or treat anyone unfairly. I can't in any way compete with popular Counter-Strike YouTubers. In this video, I will mention some really big YouTube channels that mostly make Counter-Strike content. The reason why I'm putting them on the spot is that I think some of them are currently making Counter-Strike look bad on YouTube. The story I will be telling today is about how certain YouTube channels developed and changed through time. Because of the nature of this theme, I am certain that people will get offended. This whole idea behind this video is to talk about the situation we are in and to hopefully improve YouTube Counter-Strike content. If this video is too long for you, check the description for the timeline. Now let us start with my story on how this video became what it is. As a YouTuber, I constantly watch other people that make similar content like me. I don't call them competition because we all have our ideas on what makes good content good. We should all make safe content and my personal biggest wish, useful content. I don't like to waste other people's time. With that in mind, my channel has massively grown in content quality over more than 5 years that I am on YouTube. While checking certain YouTubers' channels, I have lately discovered a pattern appearing. A pattern none of us wants to stay on YouTube. I am talking about overusing gambling, case openings, trade contracts and all other heavily money-related content. At the start I was very skeptical to make this discussion, so instead I made a Reddit post explaining my views on the subject, link in the description. Since many of you don't use Reddit and the post got much more traction than I've expected, I've decided to research this topic even more and get it out for as many people as possible. So what is this all about? This is about YouTubers who used to be incredibly good Counter-Strike content creators but have shifted a lot over time. There are also several who I have mixed opinions about and I won't mention them. Some of them can still be saved if they take my advice and explore other options for making content. Some say that Counter-Strike as a game is too old and everything that could be done already was done before. I beg to differ. How can 3 Clicks Philip still make good Counter-Strike content for 12 years and is improving every day? I would say that Counter-Strike has more than enough things you could explore make content about and still be popular. The elephant in the room is, in my opinion, only the will of making content. It is much easier to make big money-related case unboxings and similar and get a lot of views than to make a well-thought-out, interesting video. Statistics have proven that people like watching other people spend a lot of money. This fact is sadly even more encouraging for YouTubers that have a lot of money and are not afraid to spend it. They will keep doing it and they will do it increasingly, more and more. Content like that will never leave YouTube. That is sadly an unachievable dream. I know everyone needs to make money to survive and YouTube is sometimes not profitable enough. To fill in the money deficit, some take sponsorship contracts and others make longer videos. It's only natural to explore and try out what will work and keep doing what does work, but there are certain boundaries everyone should try to follow. I believe that everyone starts making YouTube videos because they enjoy doing it. This is more or less the only reason I am still sticking to my YouTube career with laughable revenue I earn for the effort I put in. Like an old saying, a life without fame can be a good life. But fame without a life is no life at all. The similar should apply for us, content creators. If you make videos with the intention to become famous and don't actually like doing it, it will sooner or later come back at you. If you make videos because you love doing it 
and you put in the effort despite the fact you only help maybe 10 or 20 people with your video, then you will be able to keep doing it for years. Now let's get to the ugly part of the video where I start saying things that should be said years ago. Sparkles has gone bad. To be honest, for him problems began way back, many years ago. When he was still making clutches, moments and ninja diffuse videos, it started to become repetitive. The videos were new, well edited and still popular, but it was known that such content won't last long. He was also opening cases in those days, but that is nothing compared to today. Around 80% of his last month's content is case openings, trade-up contracts and gambling. He is the perfect example of what I don't want to see on YouTube. If this trend continues with him and other channels, the only thing CSGO related to watch will be gambling and people spending thousands of dollars for views. But right now, this is the only content keeping Sparkle's channel alive and getting clicks. Even worse than him is a channel named Bibanator. He takes it to the extreme, but since his channel is in German, I won't comment. You can write what you think about him below. Let's move on to another YouTube star. Out of the last 48 videos, Chaboy HD has made, 41 of them are gambling, case openings or trade contracts. The days when funny moments montages on YouTube were popular are supposedly over, which recently left him with little to no ideas on what to make. Continuing with Nade King, the best on the worst list. I have big respect for him, he puts in a lot of effort, but of course no one is perfect. I am sadly sure that my video will not change his opinion because he is making solid revenue with what he's doing now. Nevertheless, I have to say that his videos are sadly too long, too repetitive and too clickbaity. I like his channel because most of his videos are useful and meaningful. The bad side is the fact that there is no chance that you will remember all the 20 tips, smokes or tricks that he shows in every video. He does that to earn more revenue apart from the money he already gets in the gambling sponsor contract. No human is capable of watching a 10 minute video and remember 15 smoke lineups from it. You would remember a few and use maybe one. As discussed in my reddit post, it is much more important to know when and why to throw certain grenades, a factor Nate King most times misses to tell. Instead, it might be a good idea to check out VuCSGO, who goes in depth and explains the smokes as they should be explained. Gambling, case opening and clickbaits are also slowly ruining channels like Pala, Mojo on PC and many more. Another channel worth mentioning is Kruxal. Not all of you know him, but back in the days he was one of the top CSGO related YouTubers. He has now completely lost his will in making Counter-Strike content and posts random clickbait videos. He is a good example of a YouTuber who is making content exclusively for profit. Another topic worth mentioning is video length. There is a boundary for the length of each type of Counter-Strike video. I'm talking about this because some content creators tend to extend the video a few minutes more when they see it's close to 10 minutes. This is nothing to argue about in most cases, but if you must extend the video, do it well. Don't waste our time with meaningless banter for 3 more minutes for you to get more revenue. If you would like to make longer videos, have that in mind when making it and make the video one wholesome experience. To top it all off, we have gambling. We have heavy gambling promotions and ads related to Counter-Strike. One thing you have to know is that with gambling, in the end, the house always wins. Why is my 13 year old watching Counter-Strike so long? Why is he so invested in this old game that was around when I was a kid? Oh, oh, it turns out it's because he's gambling illegally on it. 
CSGO is a major part of an estimated $5 billion esports gambling economy, easily accessed by kids like Elijah. That economy is fueled by status symbols called skins. A few years ago, there was a leak of how much profit a certain rigged Counter-Strike gambling website made in one day. Believe it or not, they made $200,000 of profit in a single day. As most of you probably know, the games that are seen on gambling websites are designed really well and give you a good feeling about the chances of winning. The reality is much different. This is why gambling ads and sponsorships are bothering me. They are making Counter-Strike look bad and slowly ruining YouTubers and the community. And you'd think that gambling would slowly stop after the rigged websites were discovered a few years ago. But it hasn't changed that much. I know many of you will comment, I will watch whatever I like watching. If you don't like certain channels, just ignore them and stop complaining. For that, I have a question for you. Certain content types are forbidden on YouTube because of moral principles and ethics. YouTube sees, for instance, nude content unethical and therefore is forbidden on the platform. Do you think gambling is ethical? In other words, is gambling right or wrong? This could be discussed for days and it would still be hard to get a conclusion. Some people would say yes, while others would say no. I would say no and that is because of the consequences it can have on people, especially underage people. So this whole ignore what others are doing comes with a lot of questions and dilemmas. If we are looking for the greater good, then we must include as many factors as possible. Studying about what content is bad and what content is good for the game is essential. All props go to Clix Philip and the War Owl as the two godfathers of Counter-Strike, accompanied by Banana Gaming, VooCSGO and a few more good channels. I have good faith in them not to turn bad in favor of more revenue. They are proof that good Counter-Strike content can still be created after 5 years and even after 10 years. Time is not an excuse for people who are genuinely interested in the game and enjoy making videos. Tell me what you guys think of the situation. Was YouTube ever in a worse situation in terms of Counter-Strike content? Let's try to improve YouTube and bring back the golden days of Counter-Strike content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.